Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are going to look at two set violins take on the Squid Game music. My wife and I recently finished watching this so I thought this would be kind of a fun thing and I know these two are really accomplished violinists so I want to kind of see what their take is on it because usually like as a performer versus like a composer or someone who's just interested in music history like every person has a different view on music and so since you know I'm a composer I'm kind of really interested to hear what these performers, these excellent performers, have to say about this work. So let's uh, let's see what they have to say about Squid Game. I'm Dr. Zach. Grab a cup of tea and join me. All right. So the title is "Why the Squid Game Soundtrack Is God Tier." Pretty big, uh, pretty big statement, and I'm interested to see what they have to say. Welcome to another episode of Two Set Violin. That's right, we watched Squid Game recently. I mean, everyone has. Did yeah. you watch it in dub or sub? Flame war in the conversations below. Nah, it's okay. Today we're talking about music, the universal language. We wanted to look at how Squid Game uses classical music. That's a nice transition, right? FYI, if you haven't seen it, maybe watch this video later because there's going to be some spoilers. So only watch this if you- Okay, so that, that goes true for us too. If you want to avoid light spoilers up to episode four, um, go ahead and watch something else. All right, let's keep going. You watch Squid Game. Yeah. Or if you don't care and you care about classical music, watch it then. Ooh. It took me the longest time to figure out what this piece was. I, I was like, I recognize this. For those that don't know, it's a very, very popular and famous Haydn trumpet concerto. Yeah, it's a very interesting choice of music. It's like cheerful. And fanfare, like, right? Yeah, it's like they're harking the beginning of something, but nobody yeah. knows what's no. about to happen. So, so this is kind of interesting. Uh, because you may able to turn off the closed captions too, and just in case someone's closed captioning my video. This is interesting because they said, oh, it's hearkening the beginning of something. It's this fanfare, you know, type situation. But this is also the third movement of the Haydn trumpet concerto, which would mean that it's the end of something. Which is, I don't know. Uh, but I get what they're saying. If you hear it out of context, that is kind of the, the effect that you get. So let's see if they comment on that at all. So it's still very optimistic, yes. right? I also really like the sound design. It feels like it's happening like a speaker, but then when the camera changed, the volume and the distance yes, yeah, changed. Yeah, yeah, it changed as well, right? The tying of the tutti with everyone else mm. was really nicely done for me. Yeah, so that's a nice, that's a nice technique that was used. So this is where we get into when you have like a, f a film or a TV show that you're scoring, there's something called diegetic music, which is what the people in the film actually hear. It's music that they can hear. So in this case, the speakers, right, is diegetic music. The contestants are waking up, they hear the music, right? So they are experiencing the music through the speakers. And then when you go to this shot here, where you have kind of the control room, you lose that more like tinny speaker quality. And there's a way to do this. If you just like look up a YouTube video on how to make it sound like your music's coming through a speaker, it's just like a filter you have to apply or something similar. Then you get to this point here and the message like I'm getting is that the people in this room aren't really listening to the music, right? It's just all of a sudden becomes what's called non-diegetic music, which means that the people in the shot can't hear the music. So that's, that's kind of what's happening there. I think one thing they did really taste. <laughs> not sure. Not sure if you all saw that there, <laughs> but uh, Brett, I think Brett is the, the one on the left, right? <laughs> this is just one of those things where it's so easy to, to make a mistake when you're, when it's not your instrument. I think one thing they did really. So he mimicked the trombone first when it was actually trumpet. It's just one of those one of those things where if you're a string player, for example, you don't you don't think about this kind of stuff. Whereas I'm sure any brass player would just 
automatically know what kind of hand gesture to do. Anyways, just, just kind of a funny aside. Tastefully is how they, like the visuals, the imagery is so dark and foreboding. It's like, oh, something messed up is going to happen. But the music is so calm. Yeah, the, the contrast, right? Yeah, the contrast really, really, really contrast. gets you thinking, it's like, oh, the calm before the storm, yeah. uh oh. And I think for me, it's like, you're also confused. What emotions am I actually supposed to feel right now? The director is a cultured man. Yeah. Did you know, speaking of culture and art, um, Okay, hold on. So they're talking about the imagery being all dark. I get that here when the, like, this is very dark, yet you still get these really light colored kind of henchmen, the pink, the pink men. Um, and then, I don't know, were there, I, mean, I guess we don't see too many, sorry, spoilers, right? I don't think we see too many of the pink people's faces, so there might be both men and women. But let's go ahead and look too, like when they're waking up. Um, yeah, I guess it is. I guess it is pretty dark. So I guess that tracks. Yeah, let's keep. So going. you're also confused. What emotions am I actually supposed to feel right now? The director is a cultured man. Yeah. Did you know? Speaking of culture and art, um, you know, because we're an art channel, not just falling down the skin. Yeah, <laughs> art channel. That pink room where <clears throat> they walk with all the. So then, here's that kind of contrast they were talking about too. This is a very bright room now. Stairs. Mm -hmm. That's inspired from a famous painting. Apparently the director said himself. Using art, I mm. like that. Here's another incidence of when they use Haydn. Both times it's when they're waking up. Welcome. <laughs> Here we go again. Dude, that's messed up. I wouldn't be able to sleep if I was there. Nah, I'm not sleeping yet. I feel like they've really changed the perception of the uh, trumpet concerto. Yeah. Imagine Haydn was alive today. It's like, yes, the concerto is made before everyone gets slaughtered. <laughs> Haydn's actually the front man. Yeah. Now the second... That's interesting. I think, I mean, the piece is established in that first shot, right? Where there's all the people are present. And then later you have it established in a shot where where a lot of things have happened but it's still kind of like helping to tie right i'm sure like part of you would remember or consciously or subconsciously that this was kind of the music that you heard from before so to me this is just kind of like helping to tie disparate episodes together with that same kind of like feeling and you can also kind of get the sense when they're talking about contrast the music is used in the same context they're all waking up but in one context it's all like uh, you know, bright, shiny eyed, uh, not sure what's going to happen. In the other context, they know exactly what's happening. They are super stressed out and, you know, there's like all this other kind of emotion to it. So that's kind of another interesting contrast. Second one that they used, that was very obvious to me, Blue Danube. Oh yeah. This is, I always remember that's the music they played when announcing the rules. It's so sick, right? It's like some beautiful announcement background music, but they're basically announcing them killing each other. This shot looks like they're about to waltz together to their deaths. They do look like they're waltzing yes. right now. If you look at the scene of waltzes, right? So they were kind of like it's a in a group, ballroom, in a ballroom right? in the middle, lights all on them, they're in the center stage, they're dancing together, right? It's they're moving back of and forth. Da, 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 da. Gonna die! Gonna die! <laughs> that's pretty good but yeah that's that's exactly right i mean the director obviously has an interest in like music and art and that's why we have the room that was based on you know the stairs that was based on the artwork uh that's why we have probably this scene where you know it's very intentional that they're all lined up the way they are because it's trying to like give that little bit of a clue a little bit of a tip to where that tradition kind of came from right this viennese waltz now the waltzer sounds like death. That reaction is like, ah, sh <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, the Blue Danube has felt a bit like a death horse to me as an orchestral musician, yeah. especially like, if you play second. Oh. Uh, and, and then, then that, different conductors are like, like, yeah, the, the waltzing. It's the Viennese. <laughs> Rhythm, you need to lilt a little bit. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that too a little bit. That's kind of funny. What, what he's talking about too there, if you haven't ever like listened to Vini's Waltz, there's a little bit different way that you play those offbeats. The pop, pop, instead of like a 
strict rhythm, there's a stylistic kind of timing change that happens. So if you're interested in that, just go look up any kind of waltz by Strauss and really listen for that kind of offbeat and see if you can't tell that it's like not exactly in time, in time, so to speak. Like it, it still fits correctly within a measure, but it's not 100% like, like a, a drum line, for example, wouldn't really play it like this unless they wanted to evoke that B&E style. Oh, I like that transition. Yeah. From speaker sound to like <clears throat> background yeah, music, so the, the audio processing, yeah. and the smile as well. These details in editing. Come on, editor, sound stuff up. I'm actually wondering also who they got to record this. Yeah, I wonder who recorded it. I wonder if they got anyone to record it, or if it was just like a public domain soundtrack that they used or they got the licensing from an existing soundtrack that'd be my guess is that they didn't uh do a fresh recording of this of this piece for you know just for the show i don't know Rachel. I didn't notice this the first time through, but yeah, it's a uh, sonar for strings apparently. It's so nice. Oh, that's a little subtle moment. Anyway, it's good to see how classical music was used actually in this context. Yeah. Something fresh and new. It's not just the usual. Yeah, like four fake violinists. Four fake violinists and they're going or something. And in like such a big hit of a show as well, you know, this is good. It's really good. If for season two, you need uh, two violinists. Yes. Uh, we volunteer mind. to be slaughtered. We're not making practice like, we're, we're player number 9999 and 9998. <laughs> we're musicians, we need money. Yeah, musicians. I'm in debt. Help. All right, guys. Once again, go practice and uh, you know, it'll be pretty cool if they do like a music music version of Squid Game, don't you think? I think so, yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay, interesting. So that's the end of the video. Uh, they said they liked how, like the pieces that they chose and kind of the effects that they had on the, the mood and a little bit about the contrast, right? They also then talked about how they liked how the classical music was used because, you know, there is this thing where it's like, oh, well, if the music's diegetic, Right? It's just played by somebody on stage. Like they, they've reviewed a lot of people who are fake instrumentalists, right? Who are just pretending to play while the actual recorded music is going on in the movie. And so like they they like that aspect of this, of how it was, you know, you they use the speakers, then they use the technique of going from like the diegetic to non-diegetic to also like do a transition. They timed the edits and the cuts to match up with those transitions really well. It wasn't just like a random transition all of a sudden. So like all of that was very nice. I think that's about it, right? That's all they said, which was, I'm gonna be honest, is a little disappointing because they said, this is why Squid Game soundtrack is God tier, which you would think if something is God tier, right? That's supposed to be like the best, absolute, amazing, something like you could have never ever, you know, imagine if anything being ever better than this. And while yes, all the editing and everything Squid Game is really good, and I think like all of the intentionality behind a lot of what they use is awesome. Um, like they didn't, get, they didn't give me a whole lot of reason why I should be super excited about this, uh, other than the fact that they use classical music in a kind of like convincing way and in a intuitive way for how the, the scenes were like shot and edited. That's too bad because I was, I guess, honestly, I was expecting a little bit more from, from these guys. But I guess if, if you do look them up, because I, I wanted to read a little bit about them before I watch this video, they are listed as a violin comedy duo. So, you know, their, their whole point isn't to give like a real deep analysis into this work and into how all the different like musical connections exist and so on and so forth. Their point of this video, I think, is just to like make some commentary, crack some jokes, you know, have a good time. And I think they succeeded with that. I mean, they have 3.39 million subscribers and this got 447,146 views at the time of the recording. So like they are doing, you know, they're doing their thing, which, which is great. And I'm like, I'm not trying to knock that at all. I'm just saying that really the title for this probably should have been like two or three, I guess, right, right at the end, three examples of classical music and Squid Game. Problem is, is that's not gonna get people to click on the video, right? So they have this kind of title to make that sound more interesting, but this is just comes back to like, you know, you have to be careful if if you 
think like, oh, the music in Squid Game is so good. And someone says, why is that? And they said, oh, well, I watched this video on two set and they use these three pieces. It's kind of like, well, why does that make it good? It's kind of like, well, because they use the speakers and not, they're not the speakers. It's kind of like, but so what? What about like all the original music that was written for it? Uh, that's the other thing is that they didn't talk at all about the original music. They only talked about the classical music, which may, again makes sense because that's their area of expertise. I, I That was, I think, one of the mo more surprising things when I was watching the video is they only talked about the classical music. And in the title, it says soundtrack. So there's just a lot of, I, I feel like a lot of misleading things about how the video was kind of marketed. But if we go on to the comments here, I think this top comment is really interesting. Maybe the most valuable part of this video. To explain further why Haydn's trumpet concerto was used, there's a famous quiz show. I, I'm sorry, I'm not going to try to pronounce the name. I'm not familiar. Um, in Korea, the main theme of the show is Haydn's trumpet concerto. So to Koreans, this music is a very well-received music for learning the beginning of a quiz, game, or show. The participants are high school students, so the show has a very family-friendly mood. This adds an extra layer of contrast between the music and what's actually going in the Squid Game to Koreans. So there's that kind of level of depth and complexity that like, I, I probably wouldn't have known that if I made a video, but like, you know, that's one of the cool things is two sets making these videos and then this kind of information comes up in, you know, in the comments. So that's that's just really kind of kind of neat. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.